Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and today we're going to be taking a look at this PlayStation 5 Slim, the disc edition. When we plug it in to a screen, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. I'm just going to make sure that the monitor is in fact on and what do we get? We should see if this was working, it turning on, but we looks like we're not getting any signal and in fact we get no HDMI signal. So let's take this guy apart and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. First things first, let's pop up the side. And given that the sticker's missing, I'm probably not the first one in this. All right, we'll pop off the second one. We've got a bunch of screws to remove around the border and they are different, so it's important to keep track of them. The disk drive is easy enough to remove. We just lift it up and with the little wiggle, these little guys come out and somebody's definitely been in here because the security sticker has been moved. Carefully get a hold of the fan connector and pull it up and we can lift out the fan. We'll remove the screw, it covers up the expandable memory port and we can lift away the frame. We've got a bunch of different screws to take off, so it's time for that marathon. All right, after a bunch of screws later, we're ready to take off this heat shield. First, let's disconnect the coax cables. Let's lift off the heat sink, take off the two motherboard screws, and we'll take off this, that, and I'm gonna push down here on the connector, metal bracket, and slide out a large flex. Gently lift on the board and let it pop away from the rest of the housing. This corner is gonna stick a bit more because of the power supply and then the board will come up and out. Looking at the HDMI, I can see that it's quite warped at the front, but also I can see that the pins have broken away. So let's go ahead and replace this HDMI. All right, replacing the HDMI is quite simple. I've got the board extended over the edge of the table so that I can heat from below. All you need is a decent rework station that can get up to like 450 degrees. Celsius. So I'm going to come in from below and with some tweezers, I'm going to wait patiently for everything to heat up so that we can pop the HDMI off. Just going to make some small circles around the bottom, letting it warm up and I'll concentrate the heat kind of directly below all of the pins. I'm going to take the tweezers and I'm just going to gently try to see if the HDMI wants to start moving. When everything is liquid enough for it to come off, it'll move on its own. And we got some movement. We'll pull straight up and off. I'm going to get out an HDMI, a new HDMI port. Now this next part isn't 100% necessary, but it definitely helps in the process. You can see how the pins are all gold. We want to turn them nice and shiny silver by adding some solder. So I'm going to take some flux and we'll pipe that along all of the pins. Now I'm going to take a soldering iron with a 138 solder paste. And I'm going to quickly drag the iron across all of the pins, tinning them. And then we'll make sure we have no bridging. And that all of the pins are tinned nice and properly, just like that. And this is ready to install. All right, so I'm going to take some flux and we'll add it to the pads and the through holes. We've got our tinned HDMI. All I'm going to do is come in from below with some with the same heat and I'm going to watch and wait for all of the solder to become liquid. Then we can drop this in place. And if I do it properly, I won't have to do any soldering at all. There are things you can do to speed up this process. You can add some low melt to the legs, to the pins, to the pads. You can, you can add things to help it melt faster. But doing it this way maintains the structural integrity of a factory solder with the new HDMI. Instead of adding a low melt and weakening the strength of the legs, this works just fine. All right, I'm starting to see some solder melt. You can see it become nice and shiny. The pads will go first. Almost all the pads are shiny. There we've got one of the through holes, two, go to the other side, there. Everything looks like we're getting up to temp, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it in. Keep the heat there, push it on down, 
And we'll just verify in a second once it cools down that all of the pins are making solid contact, but we should in theory be done as long as it's lined up perfectly. Looking at it under a microscope, I can see that all of the pins are nice and solid. You can see plenty of solder flowing from the pads to the pins. I'm not going to have to go in with them with the uh, soldering iron and touch up any of these joints. They all look really, really good. One thing I like to do is spread out the liquid metal to all edges. It tends to sag to one side or the other depending on how the console is oriented while in use. Eventually it all goes to one side and leaves kind of an area where the heat dissipation isn't the same. It's relatively straightforward to move it unless you've got some really, really dry spots and then you take the time to clean it. I could make a whole video on spreading the, the uh, liquid metal. Now we'll go ahead and flip it back over, gently push it on down, and we'll go ahead and reassemble everything. We'll gently slide in the connector and we'll hear a little ting if you get it just right. Don't ever force this, you can accidentally bend the pins inside there. We'll put back the two board screws indicated by the gold arrows. Put back the heat sink along with its thousand screws. Now if you're really curious of whether or not it's going to work or not, you can kind of reassemble things without fully installing it to test if you don't want to take it all back apart if you're not confident. But I think it's going to work, so I'm going to put it all back together. Now we'll go ahead and put back the coax cables. If you're ever confused which one goes where, it says RB and RW for blue and white. It's really easy to put them back in the right spot. All right, now we'll take the plastic frame and stick it on top and we'll start to put back all the screws. We'll put back the bracket and its big screw. Go ahead and reinstall the fan and connect it up. Now we can reinstall disk drive and then making sure that this side goes in first this side will click down just like that same thing here this side will go in first this side will click down and now it's time to test it let's plug this guy back in get our HDMI make sure our monitors on and we'll go ahead and power on the PlayStation and hopefully this time we have no issues with signal and we get processing that's that means we're we're good we'll let it uh, do its little repairing It'll go through its reboot and we are all fixed. We've got image once again. Quite a simple repair. It does require obviously having the right tools. You can technically do this repair without a soldering iron, but you really need to know what you're doing with the rework station. You want to have the right kind of flux. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.